And now that we've looked at the induced drag effects of uh, of aspect, uh, the, the, sorry, the effect of aspect ratio on the induced drag, um, let's look at some other finite wing effects. In particular, let's look at the effect of the lift on the lift slope for a finite wing. So remember in 2D, for an airfoil, we had the lift slope a naught, which by definition was d, dl, d alpha. For a wing in 3D, we can similarly define A to D big CL, D alpha. And what we'll show is that A is always less than A naught. For the same airflow, of course. So why is the question? Basically, because the effective angle of attack seen by the airflow sections in a finite wing is less than the true angle of attack due to downwash. So let's look at this in a bit more detail. If we have an elliptic wing, so that the induced angle of attack and the effective angle of attack are constant along the span, and it's the same airflow section, so that CL, little CL is the same everywhere, then for that elliptic wing, the overall lift coefficient is just CL equals CL. Well, let's look what's happening to the slope. Look at D, CL, D, effective angle of attack, well that's going to be a naught. But we see the geometric angle of attack alpha, not alpha effective. And since the induced angle of attack increases as CL increases, alpha gets stretched compared to the effective angle of attack, which looks something like this. So here's CL and Here, if this is a knot, then what we get for the three D wing is something like this. So blue is alpha. Red is alpha effective, which is alpha minus the induced angle of attack. So you can see that the, the finite wing reduces the lift slope as a result of this stretching effect. Since when there's no lift, the induced drag is zero, and there's no downwash, then there, alpha i is cd is equal to the induced drag coefficient is equal to zero. So CL is zero when alpha, alpha equals the effective alpha. So what does this tell us? This tells us that the zero lift angle of attack is not changed. by finite wing effects. But as you can see from this figure, the lift slope is decreased as well as the maximum lift coefficient. Now, so far this has been qualitative, but we can actually quantitatively relate A naught and A. So our definition 
of a naught can be written this way. And if we integrate this differential definition, we get CL is A naught times alpha minus alpha i plus some constant integration. So CL is alpha, and then if you write alpha i, in terms of uh, the lift coefficient, this is CL over pi AR and some plus some constant for integration. And now if we go and differentiate again, now that we've sort of written this in a, a slightly different form, with the help of the integration process, we can write DCL and now differentiate with respect to alpha instead of alpha effective. This is A by definition, and this is going to be A naught over 1 plus A naught over pi AR. And this is for an elliptical wing, or elliptical lift distribution. For a general lift distribution, we can modify this slightly and get that A is A naught over 1 plus a naught over pi a r one plus a new factor tau. Now tau is another factor that's related to the Fourier coefficients a sub n. And actually the details of tau are not that important as we'll see. Usually tau falls in the range between 0 0.05 and 0.25 and it's often a pretty good assumption to just take tau equal delta, which we already have a nice definition for. Once again, the more important effect is from aspect ratio. We can see that that's strongly going to change A, whereas tau has a minimal effect. So just to try to wrap all this back up and come back to, well, what, make sure we remember what we're doing with all this lifting line theory. Just some final thoughts before we move on to more advanced methods of calculating uh, the lift and induce drag on finite wings. Remember that our model in lifting line theory is vortices, which are distributed along the span. And then there's a trailing vortex sheet that results. So, Here's our wing, Here's the center line. Remember we had this figure where the top surface flow is going to move in, the bottom surface flow is going to move out. And the fact that there, what, what we get in lifting line theory is that the flow is in, moving in different directions at the trailing edge here. So there's a discontinuity at the vortex sheet that's in the wave. Now, in reality, there won't be a discontinuity, but there will be a thin shear layer here. And so there'll be a lot of vorticity generated in that shear layer. And so the trailing vortex sheet that we use as the model for lifting line theory is in fact physical. That is exactly what happens with a real wing. So once again, we use vorticity in a potential flow model to model the, if the, the viscous effects. In this case, it's the viscous effects caused by the vorticity generated due to the flow in a shear layer. So two layers of fluid moving past each other with non-equal velocity, shear stress is non-zero between them, and that leads to the generation of vorticity. And so you do indeed get a vortex sheet trailing downstream of the wing just as the model predicts in 
with the wine theory.